قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نحمده ونصلي على رسوله الكريم أما بعد In our past few sessions we spoke about what to do when we are faced with various experiences in life and we had concluded with what to do when we are instigated by shaitan and in this we also made the reference that if on our later discussions, insha'Allah, if Allah permits, we will talk about what goes through the mind of shaitan. However, today we commence another session in the broad discussion of life lessons from the Quran Kareem. And today we are going to talk about getting into Jannah, getting into paradise. And as an introduction, to give you an outlay of what we are going to discuss in the session, either if we can cover it today, I don't think we will do so, but today in the next few lessons, is the dynamics of the plan. How are we going to get to Jannah? We will also compile some Quranic ayats describing Jannah so that we know what we are aiming for. So the dynamics of the plan, a reflection on some of the verses of the Quran -e Kareem. I would also like us to do some practical tips, trips. And one is a written contract between you and Allah. A written contract between you and Allah. And for this, the explanation of the articles in the contract a fully filled sample contract, insha'Allah, we will do. And a personalized road to the success, which is ultimately getting into Jannah. And unbelievably easy ways to get into Jannah that would actually make shaitan cry. Let's talk of the first one. The dynamics of this plan of getting into Jannah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Kahf, Inna alladheena amanu wa amilu salihat, inna la nudi'u ajra man ahsana amala. As for those who believe and do righteous, as for those who believe and do righteous deeds, of course, we do not waste the reward of those who are good in their deeds. أُولَٰئِكَ لَهُمْ جَنَّاتٍ عَدْنٍ تَجْرِي مِنْ تَحْتِهِمُ الْأَنْهَارِ يُحَلَّوْنَ فِيهَا مِنْ أَسَاوِرَ مِنْ ذَهَبٍ وَيَلْبَسُونَ ثِيَابًا خُضْرًا مِنْ سُنْدُسٍ وَإِسْتَبْرَقْ مُتَّكِئِينَ فِيهَا عَلَى الْأَرَائِكِ نِعْمَ الثَّوَابِ وَحَسُنَتْ مُرْتَفَقًا those are the ones, in other words, those who believe and do righteous deeds. We will not let the deeds go to waste. These are the ones for whom there are eternal gardens, rivers flowing beneath them. They will be adorned therein with bracelets of gold, and they will be dressed in green garments. Green garments is reference to garments of royalty, made of fine silk and thick silk, Again, green, silk, reference to royalty, reclining therein on couches in absolute peace and comfort. Excellent is the reward and beautiful is the Jannah as a resting place. In this discussion, I will introduce, I would like to introduce a revolutionary step-by-step -step approach of getting into Jannah. Most Muslims live in the illusion 
that being Muslim by birth is sufficient to get a ticket into Jannah. We all believe that. Some even think that praying five times a day gives them the freedom to commit whatever sins they want to commit as they are doing more than most Muslims do today. And so somehow they have been promised paradise, Jannah. And then there are some Muslims who think it's too hard to get into Jannah that they just give up and don't even try. And then there are some Muslims who believe that Jannah is not worth the effort required. Na'udhu Billah. These are the various categories of Muslims. Whether you belong to one of these groups or not, by the end of our discussion, inshallah, we will be on our very own personalized road to Jannah. But before setting out on a journey, especially a lifelong journey such as this one, going into Jannah, which I would call home, because that is where we come from, that is where Adam salam and Hawa, our parents, have come from, we need to go back home. So before setting out on this journey, this lifelong journey, as this one, it is absolutely essential to have our goals clearly stated and even if necessary written. The one and the only goal of a Muslim in this life is to serve Allah, to serve his religion in order to get into Jannah, period. That's our only ultimate goal of a Muslim. To serve Allah, to serve his religion, in order to get back home, which is Jannah. And our goal is not to make a million dollars or a million rands before hitting 30, or to become the CEO of XYZ, etc., etc. This is the non-Muslim equivalent to the purpose of one's life, which non-Muslims try to find by making expensive trips, holidays, African safaris, business trips, sometimes even to the extent of divorcing their wives and marrying younger women, quitting their jobs and buying expensive cars, and it's all considered part of the midlife crisis. For Muslims, Allah has made our job easy by giving us our goal in life up front. So that was the good news, that we have our goal, Allah has given us our goal up front. And our only and ultimate goal, which is the good news, is to serve Allah, to serve our religion so that we can reach our destination. So that is the good news that we don't need to go searching for the purpose of our creation. We have got it up front. The bad news is that it's not easy to meet our goal of getting into paradise. We need to understand that to get to our home, there is going to be some struggles. It's not going to be an easy way. Somehow, the Muslims of the 21st century have begun to believe that being a Muslim and getting into paradise is very easy and they are severely disappointed and demoralized when they experience hardships on the way of accomplishing this goal. So let's make one thing clear. Getting into paradise is not going to be very easy. Every single living moment in a Muslim's life is going to be a struggle. And what is that struggle? A fight to control his desires. We spoke in our last discussion how we can overcome the desires of shaitan. But within ourselves, there's also some desires 
and every single moment in our life, there is going to be the struggle to fight to control this desire. I'm going to go so far as to say that if you think it's not a fight for you every day and you don't feel that you are sacrificing your own desires for those of Allah, then you need to take a deeper look at the state of your faith in Allah and make changes appropriately. If you think that in your life you are not experiencing these challenges, then you seriously need to take a deep look at the state of your faith in Allah and make the changes appropriately. Because there is a possibility that you do not regard the goal that Allah has placed before us as our ultimate goal. This point is made best by the following verse of the Quran. Allah says, أَفَمَنْ كَانَ عَلَىٰ بَيِّنَةٍ مِّنْ رَبِّهِ In Surah Muhammad, verse number 14, Allah says, Then can one who holds on to a clear proof from Allah be like those for whom their evil deeds are beautiful and who follow their desires. So how is our step-by-step -step plan coming along? So far, well, for starters, we need to know that our ultimate goal, a goal that Allah has planned for us, is to achieve and get back to our ultimate destination, which is home, Jannah. And in the process of this journey, we will be faced with hurdles. And if you think that in your everyday life you are going so easy and you're not finding any hurdles, it is possible that you have lost your Qibla and you have lost the direction of your journey, which is Jannah. And you need to look deep into your life and make the necessary changes. Stay tuned. Inshallah, we will be back. طوق نجاتي قرآني نبط حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم In this session that we have commenced as part of the long discussion or the lengthy discussion on lifelong examples and lessons from the Quran in our session today, we spoke about the ultimate goal, and that is to get back home, which is Jannah. We also spoke about the plan. So how is our step-by-step -step plan coming along so far? Well, for starters, we have a clear written goal that tells us that we are fighting, that what we are fighting for, and we have recognized that our journey is not going to be easy. Now you may have seen me use the words like journey. You might have observed the use of the word fighting a couple of times in this discussion. And that is because getting into Jannah is a journey. And the younger you are, the longer the journey is going to be. However, you never know when your car will crash. So you must be awake and fighting at all times during the journey. Even when young, remember getting into paradise is a full-time job. Remember getting into Jannah is a full-time occupation. And the work you do to earn money for your living is part of the job. Never let anyone tell you any different. Remember that getting into Jannah is a full-time job. It's a full-time occupation. And also remember that the work you do to earn money for your living and earn for your family is part of that job. Never let anyone tell you any different that earning a livelihood is not part of the task and the job of earning Jannah. And if you treat this goal as secondary 
to your career goals, then don't be surprised when Allah does not enjoy your sense of priorities and you end up not enjoying the year after. If you regard the earning of your li livelihood not part and parcel, part and parcel of your ultimate occupation of earning Jannah, which is a full-time job, then don't be disappointed that Allah does not make you enter Jannah. There is no differentiation between earning your living and earning, or rather, treading the journey of earning paradise. They work hand in hand. Now, for a long journey like this, the long journey of going back home, your car is your dedication. The fuel is your motivation. And by the end of our discussion, not only will you have, inshallah, a signed, written contract confirming your dedication, but you will have learned ways to fuel your dedication. By, by being highly motivated, to your cause and your journey. You can get into Jannah by either reducing your sins or increasing your good deeds. You enter into Jannah by either reducing your sins or increasing your good deeds, but even better, by a combination of both, which is reduce your sins, increase your good deeds. This plan calls for the systematic elimination of all sins from your life by first attacking the major sins in your life and coming up with the best alternative deeds. What I'm saying is the best way of earning Jannah is a combination of leaving out the major sins in your life and coming up with the best alternative deeds, which is good deeds, which I will call best alternative deeds in abbreviation BAD. Best alternative deeds, B-A-D. This plan also calls for a gradual increase in the quality and quantity of one's good deeds. You will have to get a pen and paper out very soon. It might look very trivial, but there needs to be this contract between you and I, or there needs to be this contract between you and Allah. We will be identifying our greatest sins, the most major sins that we are committing, and finding solutions and best alternative deeds to those sins. But first, for any plan to succeed, the individual at hand must be sufficiently motivated so that he does not fall off the plan when he begins to encounter hardships. Remember we said that this journey they are going to be encountering hardships. And for us to be successful in our journey, we need to be motivated so that we do not fall off the plan when we begin to encounter hardships. And for this plan, the motivation for our hard work is the reward that awaits us in the year after, which is Jannah. And so, Let's make reference to some of the verses of the Qur'an that I will share with you verses, ayats that describe Jannah that should be read repeatedly along with the translations of the rest of the Qur'an when you find yourself facing hardships along the way. Once you are highly motivated, it is essential for you to be committed and dedicated to this plan. In order to do this, 
I'm going to make you sign a renewable one. A renewable one-year contract between you and Allah. Complete with a mission statement. A contractual obligation and punitive damages for failing to meet your obligations. As a result, inshallah, you will now have a written commitment to Allah and penalties for not fulfilling your commitments. Where you will not only learn some of the easiest ways to Jannah, to get into Jannah, that will make shaitan's eyes roll in anger. But you will also learn how to maximize on smaller good deeds. The last word that I would say is the goal of a Muslim in this life is to be a servant of Allah, period. The meaning of the word Islam is to surrender. This is in reference to the fact that as Muslims, we are supposed to surrender our desires for those of Allah. This is an absolutely essential concept to understand. An essential concept to understand for a Muslim. He must not put his success in this life higher in priority than his religious obligations to follow Allah's orders. The purpose of our life on earth is not enjoyment for us, but subservience towards Allah. Our real enjoyment is being saved up for the year after. So don't go in vain search for self-fulfillment by indulging yourself in illegal pleasures here on earth. Remember, Islam is the only way of life in which a person can have at all, just not all of it at the same time. Imagine how sad it is to make a million rands in a daytime and have a car crash at night and spend the rest of your life in Jahannam. Islam makes sure that that doesn't happen to you unless you make it happen by turning your back on Allah. In conclusion, some ayahs describing Jannah. There will be times in your life when you will want to get off this plan or when you will fall off your plan. All you need to do on these times in your lives is that you need to re-energize your motivation. These compilations and the compilations of verses describing Jahannam later in the book will help you do this. So here is what you are fighting for in the words of the one and the only Lord of all mankind. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in verse 40 to 49 of Surah Saf. Reflect on these verses. And whenever you feel demotivated on this journey, fuel your motivation by reflecting on these ayats again. And as I have said, and I will continue to say, that our discussion is based on the Quran -e Kareem and to be motivated from the Quran -e Kareem to remain on our journey back home, which is Jannah. And may Allah grant us Jannah. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إلا عباد الله المخلصين أولئك لهم رزق معلوم فواكه وهم مكرمون في جنات النعيم على سرر متقابلين يطاف عليهم بكأس من معين بيضاء لذة للشاربين لا فيها غول ولا هم عنها ينزفون وعندهم قاصرات الطرفعين كأنهن بيض مكنون قرآني نبض حياتي 
قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري قرآني طوق نجاتي قرآني نبض حياتي قرآني طهر ذاتي قرآني عصمة أمري